Good morning, Savoy family. We'd like to welcome you and welcome our visitor, Miss Kelly Starlings Lyons, and our great friends from RIF. Thank you. Happy to be here. Very glad to have you with us. We are here for a very special event this morning. Miss Starlings Lyons is going to do a reading for us of her wonderful, beautiful, and personal book called Tea Cakes for Tom. I didn't Thank hear you. you. It's called what? Tea Cakes for Tosh. We'd like to start this morning's program with our good friends from RIF, beginning with Miss Judy Cheatham. Dr. Judy Cheatham, welcome. Thank you. We're so tickled to be here, and it's my delight to welcome our special guest. Your books that are coming to fifth grade, first grade, kindergarten are from our good friends at Macy's. And they have supported RIF for years. Do you know we've given out 10 million books from Macy's? Is that amazing? Can you turn around and wave to your Macy's friends? Everybody wave. In addition, we have some wonderful guests who are watching us online. They are in elementary schools, and guess what? From all over the country. So you have colleagues, fellow students, just like you, who are joining in with us from Michigan, from Alabama, from Texas, from Kentucky, and we don't know where all else, but isn't that exciting? Can you wave to the fellow students who are watching us? <laughs> oh, you know what? You can say hello. <laughs> and they've gotten questions too, so when we finish hearing from Miss Kelly, we're all going to ask questions, so I hope you've got some questions. And we'll read some questions from our friends in Texas and Kentucky and Alabama and Michigan. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to Miss Kelly Lyons. She's written, oh, good, clap Thank for her. You. That's good. Thank you. She's written five books, and you know what? They have all won awards. One of the books we featured in this year's collection that you have in your schools, Tea Cakes for Tosh. So I want you to listen for, to Miss Kelly, and then we'll have time for questions. Thank you for coming to be with us. Thank you, Miss Judy. All right, so good morning, Savoy. Good morning, Miss Lyons. Thank you. Now, you guys are being really formal. When I go into schools, I know my name is long, Kelly Starling Lyons, but all the kids call me Miss Kelly. So you all do that too, okay? Miss Kelly, you all say Kelly. All right. So I want to say thank you to Reading is Fundamental for having me here. Thank you to Macy's for making the multicultural collection possible. When I was little, when I was in third grade, that was the first time I saw a children's book with an African-American child on the cover. And that book was Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. Through the multicultural collection that you guys have as part of your school, all of us can see ourselves and see our faces and hear our stories told, so I'm really grateful that Riff and Macy's have done that. I want to say thanks to, to Savoy for having me. My heroes are my mom and my grandparents, but also teachers are big, big heroes of mine because they're the ones that really encouraged me as a writer, that encouraged me to keep reading, and that led to me being an author when I was older. And finally, I want to say thanks to you guys for being here and all my friends that are in the other schools all around the country. It's really an honor to share what I do. When I was little and I would read stories, I would dream about traveling to other places. So it's really exciting for me to share a story with you, and I hope you feel like you're going someplace else too. I'm going to talk to you about Tea Cakes for Tosh, which is part of the collection. But I had some friends that were asking me about some of the other stories that I've written. So my ideas come from lots of places. Sometimes they come from things that I've seen. So in 1995, I was here in Washington, D.C. at the Million Man March, and I saw a little girl and her daddy, and a little girl's eyes were big and sparkling. She was like a princess surrounded by kings and princes, and that inspired one million men and me. Sometimes they're inspired by history. So I was in North Carolina where I live, researching my family tree, and I saw this special document that showed the marriages of formerly enslaved people. And I learned about people jumping the broom during slavery days. And that inspired Ellen's broom. Hope's gift is inspired by the Emancipation Proclamation. 
And then I have books inspired by memories. So Tea Cakes for Tosh came from a memory, the memory of making cookies with my grandma. Who likes to make cookies here? Raise your hand. All right. So I'm going to talk to you about the cookies I made and how this story came to be. I'm going to have the pictures for you right up here on the screen so you can watch as I go along. Just one second, let me just check on the... I think I need some tech, tech help. <laughs> All right, well, while, while we're waiting to get the presentation back up, I'll just talk to you a little bit. So I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's where I was born and raised. And my grandma was born and raised there, too. But her parents, her mom and dad, came from Alabama. They're from Opelika and Auburn, Alabama. And when they came from Alabama to Pittsburgh, from south to north, they brought with them culture and history and also some recipes. So when my grandma was little, her grandma, Ida, used to tell her stories. And she would always have an apron on. And in the middle of the apron was a pocket. And in that pocket, at any time of day, were stuffed bunches of tea cakes. So if there was a grandchild who was whining about something, she had to make you feel better tea cake. If there was somebody who was tired, she had a sweet dreams tea cakes. So I thought when I heard that story that Grandma Ida's pocket was making tea cakes all day long and it was magic. <laughs> now my grandmother, she used to tell stories all the time. And some of the stories that she told came right out of our family. And so she would tell me about how she worked in the steel mill when the men went to war, and how her father worked in a coal mine uh, near West Virginia. And she'd also tell me that story about the tea cakes. Now, my grandmother's also was a special kind of cook. When I moved to North Carolina, I learned a name for it. It's called a dump cook. Do you guys know what a dump cook is? You know what a dump truck is, right? Yes. OK. So what do you take a guess. What is a dump cook? What do you think? Yep. Well, you know what? It is about dumping. Yep. You are right. So a dump cook is somebody who um, doesn't have to use measuring spoons or yes, or or use measuring cups. Instead, they can just kind of eyeball things and figure it out. Excuse me, just one second. All right, we have our pictures up, so I can show you some of the things that we missed. So this picture here, that's my grandma and her family. My grandma is second from the left, and in that picture, she's in about fifth grade. And those people across the front, those are her brothers and sisters. And that lady way over there to the right, that's her grandma Ida. And she was the one who gave her the first taste of tea cakes. This is an apron. I told you about that magic pocket. I thought I was making tea cakes all day long. So aprons have always been really special to me. This one is a picture of my grandma, the grandma that I remember. And I call her something. I call her a griot. Do you all know what a griot is? You ever hear that, that word before? It comes from West African culture, and it's somebody who carries the history of their people in their head, and they pass it down through word of mouth. So my grandma was my griot. She would tell us these stories about our family, and so that was her way of keeping our uh, history alive. Uh, when I was little, I used to love helping grandma cook, and we're talking about the dump cook. So a dump cook, you don't need the measuring spoons and measuring cups. You can know a pinch of this or a handful of that, and it turns out great. And that was how Grandma cooked. And when I was little, I helped Grandma cook. But really, I was trying to get a taste of the batter or tea cakes fresh out of the oven. I wasn't paying attention to how they were made. And when Grandma got older, something sad happened. She forgot some of her recipes. Now, as a dump cook, were they written down? No. So we didn't know how to make tea cakes. So I looked through old cookbooks, and I talked to my mom and my aunts and thought about how they tasted, and I kind of figured it out. And this is a picture of tea cakes. 
So tea, thank you. So tea cakes are similar to sugar cookies, but they're thicker. They're soft, a little bit, tastes a little bit like pound cake in the middle. And you can have them plain. You can have them dusted with cinnamon, sometimes for special occasions. You can have sprinkles on them. And tea cakes are believed to have come from slavery days <clears throat> when we had English plantation owners who wanted to keep that tradition of afternoon tea. And they would have the plantation cooks make these tea cakes. And they used whatever they had there. And so they kind of made them their own. So though it started out as part of uh, English culture, it became part of soul food. So tea cakes are soul food, and I grew up having them, and lots of people did all over the country. Now, when I write stories, like I told you about, they come from history, they come from observations, that's things that I see, and they come from memories. So tea cakes for Tosh came from the memory of making cookies with my grandma. Now, when we have an idea in our head. I know we all have writers here. You guys are writing stories for your classes. When you have an idea in your head, how do you get it from your head to the page? What do you have to do first? Who can, who can give me help? Yep. You have to think about the subject itself. Thank you. That, that is just right. We have to brainstorm and think about it. So I thought about how much I love my grandma. I thought about how sad I felt when she forgot part of her recipe. And I really focused on those feelings and decided to try to write a story about that. So my first step is the first step you guys do when you're writing, and that's to make a rough draft. You all might call it a sloppy copy because you're using it in pencil and you e erase lots of things. Mine, I type right into the computer. So this is the rough draft for the beginning of the story. Now I know, we probably all know, you can start stories in lots of ways, sometimes with a scene, sometimes with a sound. Sometimes you can start with people talking, dialogue. So my rough draft starts with people talking. It's Tosh talking to Honey. Now this version on the screen, is that the same version that's in my book? No. no. So what did I have to do to get it ready to turn it into a book? What's the next, next step I had to do? Who can help me out with that? Yep. What did I have to do? You have, you have to look for a cover. The cover actually is going to come a little later. Let's just talk about the words first, but we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the cover. Thank you. You're, yes, you're right. I had to work on it and make it better. Make sure I was painting good pictures, make sure it was clear, everybody could understand. And one thing, a tip I want to pass along to you, when you're working on a story to make it better, it's really important to use your senses. So I have a picture up there just to give you a hint, but I know you already know them. But who can name the, the uh, senses for me? What's, what's one of the senses? Yep. The five senses are your nose. Just, just, just name one to start with. No, so we can smell. What else? We can touch. Yep, yeah, we can touch. Thank you. Taste. Taste, yes. Hear. 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 And we can see. Very good. So when I'm writing and I wonder what can I do to make it better, I often think about those senses again to try to help my stories come to life. So this is one of my revisions for Tea Cakes for Tosh. And this time you'll see I used the senses. They smelled like vanilla mixed with sunshine. So that's our smell. The sugary softness melted on his tongue. That's taste. Um, they were topped with rainbow sprinkles and dusted with cinnamon. And Tosh closed his eyes to make it last. So that's us being able to see him enjoying the tea cakes. And it's also important to use your feelings. So I have Tosh loved tea cakes because Honey made them and because they had a story. So that's what I do when I write. I think about ways to bring the story to life that'll draw you in and make, like, help you feel like you're part of my story world. Now, on our process to turn my story into a picture book, I have to send my story out to see if anybody wants to buy it. I get paid to write stories. So I sent my story out. And what do you think? Did I get a yes right away? No, I got a lot of no's. So this picture here, this is a rejection letter. It's a form letter <laughs> that I actually got for Tea Cakes for Tosh. And it's, it's, it's nice. It says, dear friend, thank you for thinking of us. We were pleased to review your manuscript. We regret that we cannot offer to publish your work at this time. Now, I worked really hard on my story. What if I would have gotten that letter and just put my story aside? Would I be here to share a book with you? No. no. So sometimes we're going to get no's. Sometimes we're going to get obstacles to what we want to do, but we have to believe in ourselves and believe in our dream and believe that we're here for a reason and keep on trying. So sometimes no's can lead to yeses. And so this book was published by 
Penguin Putnam, GP Putnam Sons. I was really excited that my editor, Stacy, that she connected with the story and thought the kids would relate to it too. But my work as an author wasn't done. Just as you all have teachers to help you, I have an editor who helps me. So who's ever gotten red marks or maybe purple or green on your paper before? Note, note, notes from your teacher. I have, and I still get red marks on my manuscript. This is from my editor helping me figure out what needs to stay and what needs to go. Because picture books are short. They're usually a 1,000 words or less. They want to get to the heart of the story and also have room for the illustrator. In a picture book, the author tells part of the story, but the, illust the illustrator is a storyteller too. He's telling the story through his art. Then I had to work on it more and make it even shorter. This is just the very beginning of the story. But that's some of the process that I went through as the author. The next step, what do you think is next after we get the words right? What, what comes next? Mm -hmm. the, the final draft and then after the words, what are we going to work on next? The picture is good. So this is our illustrator and his name is E.B. Lewis. E.B. Lewis is a wonderful, renowned illustrator. He has won the Caldecott Honor. The Caldecott is the highest award for illustration, so he's won you know, one step below that very highest award. I bet you've read some of E.B.'s books. So he is the illustrator of books like Each Kindness and Coming on Home Soon by Jacqueline Woodson, and I Love My Hair by Natasha Tarpley, and Across the Alley by Rich Michelson. So, all those books, I was a big fan of his work and really excited that he was going to do my story too. Artists have their own styles just as authors do. And E.B. Lewis's styles, he finds real people to use as models for his pictures. And he's a really kind, cool guy. So he told me, I can show you some of his pictures he used as inspiration for Tea Cakes for Tosh. So on the left side, we have a photograph of the people, the real people that he used as models for the book, and on the right side we have Honey and Tosh. So how did he do? What do you think? Pretty good? Yeah. Now here's another one. Like I told you, I tell stories with the words, the artist tells stories with the pictures. So here he's doing some visual storytelling. Who can look at the left side, which is the picture, and look at the right side, which is his art? and find some differences. I call it using your eagle eyes. Look, look really close and point out some differences. Yep? The one on the left is red, the one on the right is white. Good, so the one on the left is in color and the one on the right is in black and white. Why do you think it's in black and white? So the art is gonna tell us something. Yep? It's taken back to the yes, good. So anytime you see black and white in the story, we're going to the past. <coughs> Who else can point out something different? Yep? Good, wonderful. So in our picture, the black and white one, we have that big fireplace because back then they cooked in a big open fireplace. Even cookies, if you can imagine that. Who else can find something else different? Anybody else? Yep. The stove is different. Yep, the stove is different. What else? In the, in the picture, in the, in the black and white one, it, it don't have as much cabinet. The You're right. He was saying that the one that's in color has a lot more going on, and he really simplified it, E.B. Lewis did, made it really clear, so our eyes are drawn right to that character. And you know what that character's name? Her name is Grandma Ida. So I named her after my real great-great-grandma Ida. <coughs> what else did you guys see? Do you see that window over there in the corner? Okay, so back then, we're talking about in the 1800s, kitchens were in a separate building sometimes. And they had that window because sometimes they'd get so hot you know, there was a danger of fire, and you wouldn't want the whole plantation to burn down. And so they had those windows to let the heat out and to keep everybody safe. Yep. Right. She was saying that that that's why the the kitchen was separated, so it wouldn't burn the whole place down. It would just be concentrated in the kitchen. But E.B. Lewis did a fantastic job. I was really blown away by his illustrations. What I'm going to do now, I know we've all been studying Tea Cakes for Tosh, and you guys have read it, but I'm going to share a little bit of it with you and point out a few things, and then I think we're going to have time for questions. <coughs> T 
Tosh loved when his grandma Honey baked her golden tea cakes. The cookie smelled like vanilla mixed with sunshine. The taste warmed his heart just like Honey's stories did. Long ago, before you and I were born, Honey always began, our people were enslaved. In a blink, her words carried him to another place and time. So this is that picture that we saw earlier back in the past. And in this picture, we have Grandma Ida, and she's making tea cakes. But is she supposed to share them with her children? No. No, no. she's making them for the plantation owner's family. But she wants her kids to have them too. And so she has an apron on that has a pocket, and she slips some into her apron pocket. And for her, that's to give her kids a taste of freedom, for them to know what's, what's going to be coming. And so that happens, and that story and the recipe pass down through the generations to Honey and Tosh. And one of Tosh's favorite things is to have tea cakes and hear Gra uh, Grandma Honey tell that story. But then one day, something happens to Grandma Honey that changes things. Now, like I told you before, E.B. Lewis uses color to tell us things. So in this picture, the grandma has forgotten something. I gave the problem that my real grandma had with memory for getting some of her recipes to my character, Honey. And so who can make a prediction or make a guess? What do you think Grandma Honey has forgotten in this picture? Yep. That she forgot where she parked her car. You are right. She did. She forgot where she parked her car. As the story goes on, she forgets more, more things until it comes to the thing that worries Tosh most of all. What does she forget? Say it out if, if you know it. How to make tea cakes. Good. She, yeah, she forgets how to make tea cakes. So how do you think that makes Tosh feel? Sad. Sad. What else do you think? Worried, angry, I hear. What else do you, what else? One good thing as a writer is to challenge yourself to come up with better words, to always top the word that you're using to express just what you mean. So we have sad, we have worried, we have angry. What other words can you think of? Nervous, suspicious. Nervous, okay, what else? Con confused is a really good one. What else? Mm -hmm. Curious. Curious about why? Good. Also think of some synonyms. What are some other words for sad? What do you think? Depressed, mm -hmm. Depressed. good. How about other words for worried? Suspicious. So that, that's a little bit different, but I think somebody said nervous earlier. Good, so he's feeling all those things, and he tries to figure out what can he do to help. And so Tosh comes up with a way where he can give a gift to Grandma Honey and give a gift to himself that's really going to keep the memory of the tea cakes alive. And that's what the book is all about, about that sharing between the generations, about this memory and story that's been passed down, and about the love between a grandmother and her grandson. Now, the very last page of the book is the recipe for tea cakes. Sometimes I get the question, is this my grandmother's real recipe? And it is not, because my grandma uh, didn't have it written down. This is my recipe for tea cakes. And the cool things about tea cakes, if you decide to make them, is cooks bring their own flavor to tea cakes. So you might want to add a little bit of lemon to yours, or you might want to add more, more cinnamon, or you, know, you might want to use different spices. But they're all tea cakes, and they're always made with love. So I want to just thank you guys for listening to my story, and thank you for being here with me. And I know Miss Judy has some questions from some of our friends in some of the other schools, and you may still have some questions too. That was good, wasn't it? So how many of you write? Who All writes right. poetry? Who writes short stories? Do you write about your little brothers and sisters? You should. They're <laughs> usually pretty fun to write about, aren't they? Yes. Well, you know, I was. so we have questions. You told us about an illustrator, an editor, yes. a publisher. You told yes. us about rejection letters. You got a lot of rejection letters. I did. <laughs> And so our lesson was, if we get rejected, we just keep going, right? We do it again. And we submit that manuscript over and over and over. You gave us some good vocabulary. Thank you. So Miss Green's class in Eastside Elementary in Alabama, y'all want to turn around and wave to Miss Green's class? Hi, Miss Green's class. 
They <laughs> wanted to know what inspired you to write tea cakes, but I think you told us that. Yeah. They want to know how did you decide to work with E.B. Lewis? Would you tell us a little bit more about that? That's a great question. So as an author of a picture book, I don't decide. So that decision is made by the art director and the editor. And they take my manuscript and they think about the artists who they know or they might want to work, work with, and they make a match, or kind of like matchmakers. So they were the ones that matched my story to E.B. Lewis. Now I was thrilled because I've always been a big fan of E.B. Lewis's work. So it really worked out well that he was the one who was chosen. And I, and I think he did a great job. Honey actually kind of looks like my, my real grandma a little bit. So I, I, was, I was really excited to see E.B. Lewis's art. We have another question. Okay. And this actually is from Gwen in Miss Wilson's class in Flint, Michigan. So let's wait. Hi, Miss Wilson's class. <laughs> and Gwen wanted to know if Tea Cakes is the first book that you've ever written. Was it your first? That's a great question. So the very first story that I wrote was never published, and it was called Butterfly Wings. When I was little, I used to go down to my grandparents' basement, and they would measure me on the wall with chalk. And I always was impatient to make that mark go higher, and it never seemed like it was going to happen. And so the story's about a little girl like me who was impatient, and her mom tells her, like, it takes time for a caterpillar to be a butterfly. It takes time for you to grow. So that was the very first one called Butterfly Wings. Oh, boy. Well, now let's take a question from Savoy. So raise your hand if you have a question, and I'll come back there. And what I want you to do is I want you to say your first name, and I'm going to come to you. Say your first name, wave at our friends, and then ask your question. Here you go, stand up. Say your first name. My name is Ayana. Ayana. Turn around, wave at our friends. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and now ask your question. That was lovely. My question is, what memories did you have when you was making the book? I, I couldn't hear the question. What memories did you have when you was making the book? What memories did you have when you Good. were making the book? That's a wonderful question. So my memories that I had were making cookies with my grandma. And sometimes she'd make them when I wasn't there. And I remember running home from school. I went to a neighborhood school, so I would walk, walk to school. And that, sometimes when I would come home, she would have fresh hot tea cakes for us. So my brother and I were always thrilled to uh, be able to get Get, get those special cookies. I also remember making them for Christmas time and giving them out to family members. So as I wrote the story, I thought about all those times that I made cookies with my grandma. Who's got another question? Okay, I'll come over to you. Say your first name, turn around there and smile. My name is Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your question? My question is, when was this book made? Oh, did you hear that? That's a great question, too. When was the book made? So Tea Cakes for Tosh is the book that took the longest to be published. I wrote the first draft in 2002, and this book came out December 2012. So 10, ten years it took for Tea Cakes for Tosh. Who's got another question? Go ahead. Turn around, say your name. My name is George. <laughs> okay, George, what's your question? How many books did you make? So I have five, five books. I have four picture books and one chapter book. We had a question from Flint, Michigan, and the question was, did you ever write before? How did you know you write fiction now? Yes. But what did you do before? Tell us about that. Before, I used to write articles. So I wrote feature articles about real people and real lives. So I was a journalist. I wrote for newspapers, I wrote for magazines, I did personal essays and books for chicken, like Chicken Soup for the Soul. So that was how I first got into writing. Tell us about this. If, if they want to be writers or if they want to be journalists, what does one do to prepare oneself in terms of a career to, to be ready to write? The most important thing, the very first thing, is to be a strong reader. When you read, I always say you read for the pleasure of the story, you get lost in the story, you find yourself going some other place. But as a writer, when you read, you're learning how the author has put the story together, how that author create the character, how they make the setting come to life, 
how did they plant those symbols that you read and you um, kind of thread you all, all the way through, through, through the book. So you're reading for pleasure, but you're also reading as a guide. The other thing is really practice. The more you do something, the better you get. Somebody told me once that writing is like a muscle. If you don't exercise, you're going to have flabby muscles, but if you do, they're going to be nice and firm. So you're going to keep on practicing and keep on writing. I often carry a little journal with me in my purse, and when I hear something interesting or see somebody cool, I make a little note to myself. So that's a good practice to have to carry a little book in your bag, and when an idea comes to you or you wake up with something, you can jot it down. But just to keep on trying, and also to you know really believe in yourself. Writing is a field where you're going to get some no's sometime. You're also going to get some help, so you can't be so uh, wedded to the way you wrote it the first time that you don't want to make it better. Writing is about growing, about making it better, about helping people and reaching people. So you want to keep on trying and know the value of what your teacher is sharing with you and what your friends are when they're looking at your work. Did you go to college, Ms. Kelly? I did. What did you major in? I went to Syracuse University and I majored in African American Studies and then I majored in Magazine Journalism. What does that mean you majored in something? So that was what I concentrated in. That was my, my focus. I took the most classes in that area. Okay. Who's got another question? Oh, stand up. We got the drill now. My name is Samaya Cooper. Samaya. Out of all of the books that you made, which one do you like more? That's a tough one. She said, which book is my favorite out of the ones that I've written? So the one I'm closest to, because it comes from my life and my grandmother, is Tea Cakes for Tosh. We yeah. had a question from Michigan. Was your, and, and the question was, was your great, 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 great grandmother a slave? And that is a great question, and the answer is yes. Um, when I wrote the book Ellen's Broom, um, which is about jumping the broom and people during slavery who weren't able to be legally married, I actually found a document and found my great, 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 great grandparents on it, and they were enslaved in Henry County, Virginia. Um, so, so yes. And How did you find that document? Tell us a little bit. That's history. Okay. So I, um, when I moved to Raleigh, which is the capital of North Carolina, I remembered as a kid going to North Carolina for family reunions. I knew I had lots of roots there, so I started digging through my family tree. And then I went back to a place called Eden, where my uh, family was, was from, and I found this document in a library. When you're researching African American history, if anybody in your family has ever been enslaved, you hit something called the wall of slavery. What that means is you can't find their names on any records. Why do you think their names aren't on records? Who has a thought about that? Because they passed away? That's a good, good guess, but there's some other reason. Yep. Well, he was talking about how sometimes people were freed, which is true. Yep. You have to be a free person before your name is to be in the world. Right. Of right. So enslaved people weren't considered people, they were considered property. So on a census record where they go from house to house and see who's living there, they wouldn't count the enslaved people. But you know what? There was a document called the Cohabitation Register, and that happened because they wanted to make, when slavery ended, all those marriages legal. So anybody who was blessed to still be together, they could celebrate their marriage being made legal. And so I saw my ancestors on that cohabitation document, and that is what inspired my book, Ellen's Broom. Who's got another question? Yes, sir, I'll come back there to you. Where are you? Oh, Here we go. Say your uh, first name. My name is Ralph. Okay. Say hi to your friends. <laughs> there you go. Now, I ask you a question. How did you come up with this title? With the title? question was, how did I come up with the title? <clears throat> so, Tea Cakes is what the book is all about. But I had to think of my character name. I really like names. So I'm a name collector. 
I go places and I hear cool names and I write them down. Actually, I was in a school not that long ago and I met the girl, a girl with what I think is one of the coolest names ever. Her name, first name is Story and her last name is Hunter. Her real name is Story Hunter. I wrote that in my little book. But um, when I was um, working in Syracuse, I met um, a grandmother whose name was was Honey, so Honey got into the story. I was looking for a T name. I thought it would be nice to have uh, alliteration. That's where you have that sound that's repeated. And so I thought Tosh was, it was different and it kind of made me feel, you know, warm and all that. So that's why I ended up ch choosing Tosh. Now my son, his name is Josh. And so when my son sees Tea Cakes for Tosh, he says, Tea Cakes for Tosh? What about Tea Cakes for Josh? So we have a little battle there, but um, tea cakes for Tosh because of the uh, alliteration and just the way the, the, the name made me feel. That was great. So we're going to wrap up our questions because we have a special presentation to Miss Kelly from Savoy. But wow, before we do you. that, we need to thank the United States Department of Education because they gave us funds so we can broadcast things like presentations by Miss Kelly and other authors to our RIF schools around the country. So we need to clap and give them a little hand. Okay. Cool, thank you so much. That is beautiful. Turn around the other way. There you go. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you. Close with one, one thing. Okay. Thank you, Savoy. Thank you so much. You all can sit down. Thank you. That's a beautiful surprise. I love it. So before we end, we want to thank Mr. Pope so much. He's been a wonderful principal. So let's thank Mr. Pope. Thank you. Let's thank our friends at Macy's. We already thanked the Department of Ed, but you know what? We've got some people in here, and we don't have time to talk to them right now, but in a minute, I want you to meet them. We have a lady from Alaska, lady from Pennsylvania, lady from North Carolina, and a gentleman from New York. So we're all over the map. And then, Miss Kelly, we just want to give you a wonderful, wonderful thank you. Really, really loud for Miss Kelly. <laughs> thank you. And the other thing is, when you write the next book, we all want to be stars in it, right? <laughs> With a glamorous name. So you want to wrap it up? Yes, I just wanted to wrap it up by saying when I go to schools and when I look out at all of you and when I'm talking to my friends in other schools and other places, I know that we have future architects here and future scientists and astronomers and artists and actors and dancers. And I bet we have future authors and illustrators here, too. So I'm hoping that one day in the future, you all will be where I am, sharing your stories with other children, because you matter and your stories matter. And thank you for having me here today. Thank you.